throwing. See, the, the reason why that song slaps so hard is not just because it's well written. Particularly for the people that are standing and are so emotional, the reason why that song slaps so hard is because we know that God is proven. Like we put our faith in so many things that ain't proven. We put our stuff, we put our faith in our intellect, we put our faith in other people, we put our faith in self-help, we put our faith in so many things that ain't proven. They ain't proven. They're not proven. The reason why we can sing that with such conviction and not just emotion is because God is proven. Christ is proven. He's proven. I put my faith in Jesus. He's my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation. You know why? Because he's never, ever let me down. Praise him, y'all. Praise him, y'all. Praise him. Praise him. Listen, man, and, and I ain't for before you see this. I'm not for making people stand up. I, I don't necessarily believe in that. For making people stand up to, 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 to raise your hand and everything like that. I'm not for that. Because I don't want you to, 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 to deceive yourself or to lie about what you understand to be true. But for those who know, and this ain't no shade anybody sitting, different reasons, but for those who know, for those who know, that's why it's easy to celebrate this. This ain't just intellectual knowledge, this is experiential. We've tasted this. We've tasted it. It's proven. Please be seated. Thank you, Lord. Golly, man. Woo! Said in the first sermon, what a week, man. Woo! What a week. What a week, what a week, what a week. Just me? That could be just me. Could be just me, but uh, I thank God, man. I thank God, and he's still, he's still doing it, man. He's still doing it. Huh. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Warner, and let's not uh, withhold any more, <sighs> any more. Uh, let's, let's get out. Uh, meet me at Malachi chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 4. Read it. Read from the ESV. I think uh, Amplified is on there. Um, Verse one, behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah in Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father, for your presence. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that leads us, teaches us, and guides us, Father. Um, we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, that has been proven time and time again. Um, we give honor to you today as we worship in song, Lord, and as we worship in teaching and preaching, Lord. Um, let the words of my mouth and all my intentions be, be pleasing to you, Father. Open our ears to hear um, and eyes to see and hearts to receive everything you have for us, for me. Um, this I ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, so, uh, the year is 1985. Okay? Okay. Is it, 90, 85 was a good year. 85, uh, my wife turned one year old, so that, it was a great year. It was a great year. Again, um, my wife turned one year old, but, uh, but also uh, in pop music pop, pop, or pop culture. Um, it was popping in 85. In 85, uh, we had uh, Michael uh, Jeffrey Jordan, who uh, won Rookie of the Year that year. Um, uh, that was part one of his uh, campaign of um, being the greatest of all time. Right, right, yes. No pushback, okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that we agree with this. 
um, because I don't want to shame any others who might, you know. But yes, uh, so that happened in in, uh, 85. In 85, uh, one of my all-time favorite movies um, came out easily top 10. Watch it at least once every year. Um, The Color Purple came out in December. So many quotables. You know, all my life I had to fight. Had to fight my uncles. Had to fight my brother. So many quotables in that. So many quotables in that. Um, also, another one of my favorites, uh, very far down on the list, as my, but still a favorite. My favorite uh, time travel movie, um, uh, uh, Back to the Future, comes out. Again, so many quotables. So many quotables. Made a time machine out of a DeLorean? Just me. Okay. I, I liked it. I liked it. Um, uh, in gaming, we had uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers. Came out on Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, uh, some people who are, are born after that, y'all will never understand what it is to take a cartridge, have to blow on that mug, have to <laughs> tap it on your leg a couple times, maybe get some alcohol, and and then after that, you press it down gingerly into the joint, and maybe that mug will pop on. Um, but that was, looking at all the faces like, What? <laughs> It just can't download it or anything? No. Um, so, yeah, so th- there was that. Um, also, music was popping. We had, you know, uh, How Will I Know If He... We had Whitney Houston with How Will I Know. Um, I'm going I'm to I'm maybe shock some of you. We had uh, Tears for Fears. Everybody wants to know. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Good, 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 good. Um, I don't feel so judged. Uh, and, uh, but also, uh, we had uh, what is done within many amateur nights, or at least attempted and tried to be done. Um, we had Miss Shaka Khan uh, coming with Through the Fire. Through the Fire. Um, it has been sampled a bunch of times, uh, but most notably my Mr. Kanye West, Through the Wire. Um, for those who don't know, I'm about to bless you with uh, the chorus. It goes like this. Please don't be so quiet. Please sing along with me. <laughs> It goes through the fire, through the limit, to the wall. Thank you, Z. For a chance to be with you, I gladly risk it all. To the fire, to whatever comes. One man, just a chance at loving you. I take it all away, right down to the wire. Even through the fire, I drink a boost for breakfast, head in so for dessert. Somebody order pancakes. I just said, it. okay, that's enough. That's more than I did first service. That's all you. Gonna get. That's all you gonna get. That's all you gonna get. That's all you gonna get. Like, y'all, y'all gonna miss around. They gonna have me up here no more. <laughs> Um, But for those who are distracted by my uh, singing voice, um, the lyrics uh, go as as follows. Uh, Through the fire, to the limit, to the wall, for a chance to be with you, I'd gladly risk it all. Through the fire, through whatever come what may, for a chance at loving you, I take it all the way, right down to the wire, even... Through the fire, through the fire, through the fire. Um, so I haven't, uh, I haven't spoken with Miss Shaka Khan. I have no uh, insider knowledge of it, but I uh, assume that this was a uh, saying with uh, having a lover in mind, that they would go through the fire, through, through whatever comes with me for this particular human being. Now, to say or intimate that you would go through the fire, whether literally or figurative, figuratively for anybody or anything, is um, impressively um, sacrificial, you know, to, to knowingly uh, commit your body to the flames, again, figurative or literal, for anyone um, to, to, to knowingly submit your body or yourself to certain indefinite pain, to certain indefinite, um, at the very least, scarring, marring, uh, mutilation, potential for death is audacious. Um, is there anything worth going through a fire for? I mean, uh, 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 imagine that you are, are standing uh, or are going through life and a fire suddenly uh, swallows you up and engulfs you. 
you know, your, your, your adrenaline is going to kick in, that, 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 that self-preservation muscle that all of us have is going to kick in. You're going to try with everything in you to get away from that mug. You're going to, you know, avoid it, you know, uh, patch yourself, whatever. I, I used to play football in high school, and it was like for a second, for a second. You blink and you miss it. And, and, I, and I used play very loosely, um, but uh, very loosely, like not at all. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> but uh, we had a thing, and it's not exclusive to our team. There's a lot of people who play, who play ball say this, that we, uh, we say we're willing to run through a brick wall for coach. And what that meant was we were so bought in, we were so locked in to what coach was saying, to what, to what his, his, his game scheme was, to even his belief in us that we were willing to submit our bodies to <laughs> smash into other bodies in order to reach this goal. Right. So, again, imagine that you are standing uh, or just going through life and that fire hits you. And, and, and let's call that fire disappointment. Let's call that fire humiliation. Let's call that fire um, persecution. Let's call that fire being ostracized. Let's call that fire the potential for death. Right. You, you're going to try with everything in you to get off it. Now, what if consider this? What if you are, again, going through life and you see that fire far off, but it's coming towards you. Again, of course, you are going to try to avoid it because, and that's not crazy because we understand fire to hurt, to pain, to, scar, to, to cause scarring, marring, mutilation, even death. Because fire changes whatever it touches, it changes whatever it touches. It deforms and it misshapes, but in the right hands, y'all, fire can transform and create. What if I told you <laughs> that that's exactly what God wants from us? Not, not necessarily to like run head first into, into certain danger, but what, if, but what if there was a fire, a God-ignited fire right in front of you? And God is telling you, no, 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 you stay right there. You stay right there. You don't move. You let that fire touch you. You let that fire touch you and let it complete its work. Again, this is a God-ignited fire. What if? What if? Don't run. Let's turn back to Malachi 3. Now, just to give us some context about Malachi 3. Malachi 3 is, or Malachi the book, which is four chapters. Malachi, by the way, means my messenger or my angel. Right, so God sent Malachi as a messenger to the people of Israel. So this book takes place about 450 to 500 years before um, Jesus Christ walked bodily on the earth. Um, this was a, a couple centuries after Israel had come out of Babylonian exile, very, uh, a bunch of centuries away from them being enslaved in Egypt. So they were finally in a place of settleness. They had uh, rebuilt the temple. So for the first time in a long time, they had one unified place of worship. The wall behind, um, I'm sorry, the wall around Jerusalem was built. It was solid. It was safe. So again, for the first time in a long time, they had safety. They were settled. They were living uh, the blessing or in the blessing of God. Now, perhaps as what does happen, perhaps because of that blessing, because of that ease of life, um, they began to take things for granted, a lot of things, namely um, the Lord, their God. Their worship was janky. It was faulty. It was lazy. It was half-hearted. Their spirituality was apathetic. They were uh, seeing God or regarding God as common. They were offering God uh, polluted and, and, and damaged and janky offerings, stuff they wouldn't give their employers, stuff they wouldn't give anyone, but they were giving, giving it to God. And not only that, they were expecting God to bless them as he did prior. The priests who were in charge of, of guarding knowledge and teaching the word weren't. And perhaps because of that faulty worship and that lack of, of preaching, that uh, a pattern, that, that mindset uh, influenced uh, social goings on. So like marriages were, were breaking up. Divorce was rampant. No longer was Israel uh, modeling the covenant love that God had charged them with modeling. Um, they were, uh, men were sleeping with other men's wives, a.k.a. adultery. Um, they were apparently engaging with sorcerers and, and, and witches. 
Um, after all the stuff they had been through as a people, being oppressed, being enslaved, you would think that they would know better and, don't, and wouldn't do that to another people, another person. But no, as was happening, we don't learn sometimes. And they were oppressing their own people. They were oppressing the blue collar workers within their own community. They were oppressing the, 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 um, the, the widows and, and the orphans, the foreigners, the di- disenfranchised, the marginalized. They were also keeping uh, uh, money and offering from the needy and from the temple, those who needed it. So this is the context of where Malachi takes place. Now, uh, because of this, God uh, sent Malachi or spoke through Malachi to tell his people to turn back, to repent, to make a 180 from what they were doing and turn back to him. And some did. Some did. But most didn't. So God, because he is God, uh, told his or or, or gave this message to Malachi, essentially saying, okay, 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 I see you. I'm putting cases on all you. (laughs) Didn't say that. That's not in there. He didn't say that. But what he did do, what he did do was remind them that I am God. I am God. I am your God. I am holy. I will not be treated like one of your little friends. I am holy and worthy of reverence and of true and full worship. So Malachi speaking for God, he says that God will send a messenger. And that messenger will make the way for uh, the, 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 um, the, the Lord that they love. That messenger, we find out a little later on, is John the Baptist. And the Lord who they had been waiting for was John's cousin, Jesus. So let's get to Malachi 3. Actually, before you get to Malachi 3, uh, two chapters before in Malachi 1. If you, if you have, just, just turn there for me for a second. Um, because I love how uh, God puts all of this in a context. The first verse, the first two verses of Malachi goes like this. It says, the oracle of the word of the Lord to Israel by by Malachi, verse two. I have loved you. Before all the judgment happens, before all the curse with the curse, before all the refiner's fire and purifying, all this happens. God establishes, check it. I love you. I love you. Okay, and that matters. That matters. That matters that you know that the one that's rebuking you, it ain't rebuking you out of out of uh, uh, spite or or petty. Like I'm doing it because I love you. I'm I'm disciplining you because I love you. You see, and that's a, a, just sidebar. That's a di- that's a difference between discipline and and punishment. They're they're both they both have legitimacy. Punishment, however, does not require love. Punishment is you've done this. And now you have to feel this consequence of equal value, right? So that the the, the scales of of justice can be can be can be can be set right, right? It doesn't require love. Discipline, however, says that listen, you've done this, so now I'm gonna teach you how to do better. I'm 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 gonna teach you so you build, so you grow, so you eventually wise up and do better. See, that requires love, or at the very least, that requires an investment in the person that you're disciplining because you want to see them do better. Right now, there's bleed over. There, there's 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 bleed over, but there's a distinction. And what we see in Malachi is God disciplining his kids, which are Israel. Um, all right, so let, let's go back to Malachi three. It reads, uh, "Behold, I am I am going to send my messenger, and he will prepare and clear the way before me. And the Lord, I'm read, uh, reading from the Amplified. The Lord, the Messiah, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his people." The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? Excuse me. Who and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire. This is Jesus they're talking about. He is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap, which removes impurities and uncleanness. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, the priests. The janky priests and refine them like gold and silver so that uh, so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in ancient years. See, the ministry of Jesus will be akin to a refiner's fire, a purifying uh, a fire. It would it would humble the proud. It would bring low the self-exalted. It would counter lies with truth. It would bring light 
to darkness. In short, in short, this fire would, would, would clean up, purify, and burn up anything that was, unsure, uh, that was uh, impure and chafe. Now, again, the ultimate purpose wasn't simply to go ham and, 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 and go scorch earth and cut people's heads off and kill everybody. That wasn't the purpose. Actually, Malachi, uh, the, the, the third chapter of chap, I'm sorry, the third chapter, verse three tells us what the objective was. It says, he will sit, Jesus, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And check this out. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. The objective, the objective was righteousness, y'all. It was rightness with God. The objective is so that they would uh, repent, so that they would turn back and ultimately model his attributes to the world. Model attributes like love, truth, justice, mercy, holiness, holiness. This fire would burn anything that was chafe. And guess what? The more chafe you had, the more that mug hurt. We learned last week that, 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 uh, that chafe represented something that was worthless. Useless, flimsy, pride and self-righteousness, that's chafe. Lustfulness, that's chafe. Apathy for the things of God and the will of God, that's chafe. Injustice, treating God as common, that's chafe. Habitual disobedience, rebellion, rejection of God's laws are chafe. Sin and wickedness, that's chafe. Through the fire. Through the fire. Now, if I'm being uh, scripturally uh, honest and I am, you know, handling, exegeting this thing with uh, some contextual uh, accuracy, I have to concede that, that, that Malachi was not written to us. The prophet Malachi was writing to these particular people, right? So that curse with a curse, that, you know, that, that judgment, that was for Israel. Right. But although this thing wasn't written to us in God's sovereignty, it was written for us because we see it. We see it repeated in New Testament. Uh, Come me to Hebrews, Hebrews uh, chapter 12. Um, Starting at at verse one, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Verse four, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, listen, he said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you for the Lord discipline who the Lord disciplines those he loves and he chastises each one he accepts as his child. If you endure this, endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who was never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline uh, you as he does his children, it means that you are illegitimate and you are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we uh, uh, submit even more to the discipline of of the father of our spirits and live forever? Verse 10, for our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always for our good so that we might share in his what? His holiness. Verse 11, no discipline, no discipline is enjoyable when it's happening. Duh, it hurt. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of what? Righteousness for those who are trained in this way. Verse 14, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Verse 29, for our God is is a consuming fire. What Jesus was or is as a refining fire, same is consuming fire. They're the same thing. That opens that right up, right? Yes, yes, there is a punitive element to it. Absolutely, especially in the Old Testament. But mainly the fires are meant to refine. They're meant to discipline. Especially and particularly 
for the Jesus follower, for all those who have received Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. It ain't, this fire ain't something to be run from, although everything in you wants to, everything in me wants to. Rather, it is to actually be leaned into, expected even, for righteousness and holiness sake. Now, I think um, I'd never heard this prior to Pastor B saying it, but last week he said something about like the older saints used to, or I guess still do, say something like, um, uh, uh, holiness is right. Holiness is right. Never heard that before, but holiness is right. It's my baby. Big baby, little baby. (laughs) See, if she didn't discipline her, didn't love her. She just let her run around. But yes, holiness is right. And I know for for many of us, like we grew up in situations um, or churches or around people that that made um, legalism the same thing as holiness. They are not. They are not. And for those who don't know what like legalism is, legalism is, okay, if I do a bunch of uh, uh, works, if I abstain from a, from a bunch of things and, and whatnot, that'll somehow make me more worthy of God's goodness. That, that'll somehow get me closer to God. God doesn't call for legal, a legalism. He calls for holiness. Holiness is this. Holiness is being separate or set apart for use for by God. In holiness, we model God's nature and his attributes and his character in the world. Attributes like this, love, truth, mercy, justice, faithfulness, grace. You ever had somebody, I've seen this before, somebody like, boy, they, they, they'll speak in some tongues, but they are the meanest somebody. Yeah, that's, yeah, the, the tongues part, that's, that's great if it's real. But you know what true holiness is? Not talking bad about your neighbor. That's, that's real holiness. What real holiness is, is being loving, being truthful, being compassionate, uh, seeking justice. That's holiness. And just so that's, there's no confusion, um, I know as, as Christians, uh, I, I, I know that um, we experience, well, let me take it back. There is a holiness that we as Christians, we as people who have affirmed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we get immediately upon salvation. Right. Once we have received Jesus and, and, and the Holy Spirit enters us, we are deemed as holy, as set apart. But there's also a progressive holiness. Right. There, there, there's the getting more and more like Jesus, more and more uh, attaining these qualities. Right. And that's done by the Holy Spirit. I think it's called uh, sanctification. Right. So we are, in a sense, we are saved, but we are also being saved. We are holy, but we are being made more holy. That makes sense. Good. Again, fire changes whatever it touches. Fire in the right hands, it transforms and it creates. It creates what? It creates more love in you. It creates more truth in you. It creates more justice in you. It creates more compassion in you. It creates more patience in you. More empathy, more mercy, faithfulness. That's holiness. The same fire that mutilates in different hands is the same fire that mends. Is God. The same fire that destroys in different hands is the same fire that soothes. The same fire light that exposes sin is the same fire light that illuminates and reveals his truth. The fire that hurts is also the one that heals and cultivates holiness. Holiness. And because we're prone, like I am, to consider that, okay, yeah, this refining fire only happens to the worst of Christians or the ones who, you know, backslide and whatnot. First Peter challenges that and it sets us right. Uh, First Peter uh, chapter four of uh, verse seven and pop over there. It says this. It says. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, he's talking to Christians now. Therefore, be self-controlled, be sober minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. That is beautiful. That is excellent. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. Beautiful. As good stewards of God's very grace, whoever speaks is one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. Beautiful. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belong belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Don't you wish it just stopped right there? But no. 
In the very next verse, after giving all these things, man, do this beautiful thing, do this, love and, and serve and, yada, and, and do this, do this. God says this, and I love saying with Malachi, he starts with beloved. I love you. I love you. Okay, so just prepare with what I'm about to say to you. Beloved, do not be surprised by the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening. You, you're doing all that stuff. That's great. You're a <clears throat> quote unquote great Christian. All that stuff. Good. You're loving. You're serving. Da, da, da. That doesn't prohibit you from, from refiner's fire. In fact, it's coming. In fact, expect it. It's coming. Don't be shocked. Don't be moved off your center. It is coming. Now, I know that, that, that ease is the way of life. Comfort and convenience in your Christianity is what you want, is what I want. I want a certain level of ease, but God is calling us, each of us who are called Jesus Lord and God our Father, he is calling us to a fire. Not a, not a fire that, that destroys or anything like that, but a, rather a fire that purifies, that refines, that makes us more into his image, his image of holiness. Now, <laughs> So um, a couple of days ago, when I was uh, just finishing this up, I was talking to Caleb, who's somewhere here, um, and you know, I was just telling him about the, uh, you know, what I was studying and what I was about to, you know, potentially present. And I, I made the remark that, you know, like I don't know if whoever's been here for the last couple months, but the last time I was up here uh, speaking, preaching, I, uh, I, I preached the word on storms. Um, on uh, the inevitability of storms and, and, you know, storms, essentially a similar thing like this. And I was like, man, this thing sounds similar. Before I was saying storms, now I'm saying fire. I'm like, repeat myself. Um, I'll say this, and I, and I, and I can kind of confess, not a confession, but, you know, we're, we're fam. We're, I'm going to talk to you. Um, this is absolutely a reflection of the season of life I'm in. I think that's why, well, I know that's why, apart from, you know, God's Holy Spirit. Like, this is where I'm at, you know. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think I am. I don't think I am. But this is where I'm at, you know. This is the season that God has me in. Um, and it, and, it's, and it, it, it smarts, as you used to say when you were a kid. Like, that smarts. It hurts, you know. But aside from me being here and essentially I'm telling you what God has been uh, teaching me, aside from that, I think it's of the utmost importance that if you are a new Christian, if you are an older Christian, if you ain't even, you know, about this Jesus life, it's to be known that being a Christian does not prohibit you from the flames of refining. It doesn't. It just doesn't. Expect it. Expect it. Expect it. And it's, and, and it's, and it's for no other reason at the, at the core of it that God loves you. God, I know that's hard to conceive of in the moment when the pain is so blinding and so sharp and so random, it seems like. Like, really? Still? After three months? After a year? Still? I'm telling you, I know. I know, and look, I'm not, I'm not trying to cap, like, listen, the people that have gone through far worse than what I'm experiencing right now, I mean, for all intents and purposes, if this is the worst fire I get, then thank you, Lord. But it hurts. It hurts. But it's God's love. And the longer I've walked with the Lord, the more I've realized that these things are not only inevitable, but needed and necessary. Um, you know, and it's hard. And in these bodies, in this world, yeah, that thing is going to be hard because everything in our body, just like with the fire, everything in our body wants to resist it. You know what I'm saying? Everything. Every, people in the world, no, that's, no, you don't, you know, ease, you know, do, do you know, what makes you happy and all the other stuff. And, uh, yeah, there's truth, some truth to those things. But pain, especially for the Jesus, Jesus follower, it, 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 ain't to, it ain't to break you into nothing. It's to refine you. I said that too. And that, that is holiness. Holiness. Um, there's a, a quote. I think they got it. It's from uh, Rick Warren. It says, um, God loves to turn our crucifixions into resurrections. The things you wish were most removed from your life are often the very things that God is using to shape you and make you into the believer he wants you to be. 
he wants to use that problem for good in your life. There's something more important than your pain. Hear that part? Because that rocked me. There's something more important than your pain. Your pain is very real. There's, no one is poo-pooing that pain. It is very real. But consider that there's something even more important than your pain. And it's what you're learning from that pain. I'm going to end with this, uh, <clears throat> with this story. We'll begin to end. Um, I saw this and uh, I was very moved by it. Uh, so it said, uh, there, were, uh, there was a group of women studying the book of Malachi. And they get to chapter three where it says that God will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Uh, they were puzzled and asking what that could mean about the character and nature of God. So one of the women says that she was going to go and find out about the process of refining silver. And then she'll come back and tell everybody um, at the next Bible study. So she calls a uh, uh, local silversmith and makes an appointment to watch him work. She watches him hold the silver in the fire and heat it up. He's explaining that when you refine silver, you have to hold that thing right in the hottest part. Not, not the red part, not the, not, not the yellow part, not even the, the orange part. I'm talking about the blue part. The most intense part. You got to hold it there and keep it there. Because that's where you burn away all the impurities. So the woman thinks about God holding us in such a spot. You know, think about that verse about how God sits as the refiner and purifier of silver. So she asked the silversmith, is it true that you have to sit here the entire time while the silver is being purified? And he explained, yes, not only do I have to hold it here in the hottest part, but I have to also keep my eye on it the whole time. Because if the silver's left in the flames for just a moment too long, it'll get damaged. So the woman sat there for a minute and then asked, how do you know when the silver is finally refined, when it's fully refined? The silversmith smiled and he said, that's easy. I'll know that it's fully refined when I can see my face in it. Holiness, to look like Jesus, that's the end game. That's the end game, to respond like him, to love like him, to forgive like him, <laughs> to have patience like him, to behave, to forgive, to, to be a truth teller like him. That's the end game. And again, the more chafe you have, the more it hurts. I don't know about you. I got chafe upon chafe upon chafe. That God is burning off and it hurts, but I give thanks. Um, Romans 28 is, is a verse that a lot of us know, you know, uh, but we know that God works, to, uh, for all things work together uh, for good for them that love God and call according to his purpose. And many times the verse right after that just gets totally forgotten or disregarded, right? But indulge me for a second. It says, Romans 8, 28, it says, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. It is your God given destiny to be conformed to the image of his son by any means necessary. By any means necessary. The fire don't stop until we look like Jesus. By God's grace, gives us seasons of, okay, it ain't inside, it ain't inside, it ain't inside. But the fire don't stop until we look like Jesus. And not for nothing, we ain't looking like Jesus till we get to glory. Lastly, I wouldn't be so naive as to believe that people listening or even people in this room, um, that everybody's a Jesus follower in here. I know that. I know that. And listen, that refining or that fire, or those, uh, you know, uh, uh, thing, uh, um, seasons of adversity that you're experiencing for the Jesus follower is to make us more like Jesus for you is actually to bring you to Jesus. Amen. Second Corinthians seven, nine, it says, as it is, I rejoice not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved unto repenting for you felt a godly grief, godly grief so that you suffered no loss through us for godly grief. Sorrow, pain, affliction, sadness, all of it produces repentance that leads to salvation. 
So if you're going through something, you ain't a Jesus follower, and you ain't a Christian, whatnot, I'm here to tell you that that stuff is so you point, is, is, is point you to Jesus. Not so that you can, you know, uh, you know, build up your muscles, be morally, you know, strong. And I'm getting stronger. No, 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 bro. Sis, that's for you to be pointed to Jesus Christ. Lastly, and I, I feel like I'm an old preacher that I always saying, okay, this is my last name. I promise you, this is my last day. Um, so that was the end. That actually, full stop, that was the end. Um, but when I was putting this together, like, I, I felt like I was absolutely blessed doing this, you know, putting this together. God, and he's still blessing me. Um, I was like, you know, oh, man, you know, people might, you know, because it's not necessarily the, the thing you walk away from and like, yeah, man, I feel good for the week. Yeah, I feel uplifted. Hallelujah. Da, da. It's kind of like, dang, burning. Sheesh. <laughs> okay. Um, where is the hope? In all of this, where's the hope? It was three things for me, um, at least three things. One hope is that, and by hope, I mean um, a sure expectation. So like I'm expecting this thing to happen, even though it hasn't happened yet. My first hope is that um, after all this season of refining, is that I absolutely will look more and more like Jesus. That we will look like Jesus more and more step by step little by little second thing is my hope is that I don't have to experience this thing a second longer than I have to not one second longer and my third hope is that even though I'm going through this fire that Jesus is going that Jesus is walking with me through it the Emmanuel, God with us, is walking with me through it. Like the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Nebuchadnezzar threw, threw them in a real furnace, like a real furnace, because they wouldn't bow the knee to his God or their God or whatnot. And, and Nebuchadnezzar comes back and checks on them, and he sees that they're actually walking around in this furnace that killed other people. They're walking around. And not only are they walking around, but he, but he spots a, a fourth person in the flames with him, and he says that that fourth one looks like a son of God. That is what my hope is, that not only is Jesus the refiner, not only is he the fire that's refining, but he's also walking me through that mug and that he won't let me endure that by myself. Let's, um, let's, let's pray. Um, Father, thank you, God. Uh, man, oh, man. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness for your grace. Father, we thank you, Lord. And again, I say it with gritted teeth and, and, and clenched fists. Father, I thank you for your refining fire because I know who's holding the candle. I know who's holding the match. And it's you. I thank you, Lord, that your refining is for my good, Lord. I thank you and I trust I'm banking my whole life on it, that it's you doing this. I'm banking everything. So, Father, continue your work, man. Continue it. Continue your work in us individually as a body. Continue it, Father, um, so that at the end of it, we will look more like your son, Jesus, and we would be holy and righteous. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.